Hi everyone, welcome back to the last video of the series on instant payments. So in this video, we are going to understand a little bit about the UPI settlement process, basically how the interbank settlement happens for UPI transactions. So in one of the earlier videos, we have seen the detailed UPI process flow from the peer PSP to the payee PSP and finally to the beneficiary. Also in an earlier video, we have depicted the high level process flow. We are going to revisit it again in the context of the settlement between the remitter and the beneficiary banks. So let's go through the process once more to understand this in detail. So the center through the center PSP will initiate the transaction to remit to the receiver. The transaction goes to the NPCI infrastructure. The NPCI then sends a request for debit to bank A. So the debit of the remitter happens and credits an UPI GL. At the same time, once the debit has been approved, the NPCI infrastructure then sends a request for credit to bank B which credits the ultimate beneficiary and debits the UPI GL at bank B. Now the question here is that how do banks A and B settle? So let's take an example wherein in a settlement cycle there were 10 transactions done from bank A to bank B totaling 100,000 INR and similarly bank B sends across around 5 transactions totaling 60,000. So in this scenario for the cycle, bank B owes bank A around 40,000 INR. So how does this settlement happen? So if you see that NPCI records all such transactions in its repository, and we are also aware that, that both bank A and bank B are mandated to hold RTGS accounts at the Reserve Bank of India, which is the central bank. So both the banks have given RBI the authority to NPCI to debit and credit their RTGS accounts. So at the end of the settlement cycle, NPCI then sends a request to debit bank A for 40,000 and credit bank B for 40,000. So it's important that both the banks maintain adequate liquidity in their RTGS accounts. So at the same time, NPCI sends a settlement report to bank A containing the list of transactions so that bank A can do reconciliation on its own. So when this process happens, it credits the Nostro RTGS account and it debits the UPI GL. So the UPI GL gets netted off. So if you notice, while here it's a debit on bank A, this is a credit. That's of course because the Nostro RTGS is nothing but a shadow mirror account and the balances will be in opposite signs. Similarly, the settlement report is sent to bank B wherein the debit of the Nostro RTGS happens and the UPI GL is credited, knocking off the UPI GL. So this in essence is the UPI settlement process wherein bank A and bank B settle among themselves. So of course the scenario can become more complicated when there are more banks in the picture. But however, the, the process remains the same. The net debit and the net credit positions of each bank is arrived at by NPCI. So let's recollect the key features. Number one, the settlement happens multiple times a day, of course, because of the huge volumes on transactions, we cannot wait till end of day and banks have liquidity positions to maintain. That's why the settlement cycle happens multiple times a day. This is the case of net deferred settlement. Why net? Because it is the settlement doesn't happen after each transaction, like in the case of RTGS. And also it is deferred because it happens post the beneficiary and the remitter being debited and credited. So this is a case of net deferred settlement. And as we have seen, all members should issue a letter of authority to the Reserve Bank authorizing the settlement agency, which is NPCI, the National Payment Corporation of India, to credit and debit the settlement account with RBI, which is nothing but the RTGS account. We heard about the settlement cycle. So what exactly is the settlement cycle? How many times a day? So this is a screen grab from a circular issued by UPCI, wherein in 2021, they said that we'll have eight settlement cycles. And you can see the from and the to time. 
So most of them ranges from two to two and a half hours, except the one at 11 to five, because obviously the transactions are going to be very less during this time period. And the last column tells you what's the expected RTGS posting time for the settlement. So if you look, most of the time it is after two hours, except for the first one, everything is after around two hours from the end time of the cycle. So if the end time is 9 p.m., the RTGS hitting time is around 11 p.m., except for the first one because it goes actually into the uh, late night. So thank you for being with us in this important video to understand bank settlement in UPI. The next series workshop will be on liquidity management, which is now a very important ask for corporate customers to all the banks. Thank you.